My name is Elizabeth. I am the principal sci a principal scientist at PathBio. Uh, I will talk about ISOSeq today. So I will give you a very quick background about what ISOSeq is. It is our offering of full-length RNA-seq. The difference between short and long read RNA-seq is that with short reads, you start with fragmented cDNA. And this is because short reads are only about 100 to 150 bases paired in at most that long. And that means in order to know what transcripts the data came from, you would have to do some amount of computational assembly or inference. The challenge is when you get to complex splicing, when there are multiple isoforms transcribed for the same gene, accurate inference of what transcripts are actually in there becomes difficult, if not intractable. With long reads, the goal is to create full-length cDNA and sequence them in full. There's no assembly required. So far, there's been more than 5,000 PacBio publications, out of which more than 300 have used the ISOSeq method. The ISOSeq library prep starts with either poly RNA or total RNA, followed by full-length first trans cDNA synthesis. After PPR amplification, you make a smart bell library and you put it on the PacBio system. This sample prep means one read is equivalent to one transcript molecule. And instead of doing computational assembly, the bioinformatics analysis focus on identifying full-length reads and clustering them at the transcript isoform level. There's many um, protocols available on PacBio's website. We also, in addition to doing whole transcriptome, we also support targeted isoseq using either IDT or NimbleGen probes. I encourage you to go to the website to check them out. For genome annotation, many of our customers multiplex tissues. We also have a protocol for doing barcoded isoseq. I will briefly walk through the ISOSeq analysis workflow. A really quick correction to Justin's presentation. In SmartLink 6.0, which you have access to right now, the ISOSeq software is ISOSeq 3. In the upcoming SmartLink 7.0, we will likely drop that number 3, and it will just be called ISOSeq. The ISOSeq workflow in SmartLink 6.0 starts with generating high-fidelity reads using the CCS algorithm. Here I'm showing examples of such reads where the red is the 5 prom cDNA primer, the green is the 3 prom cDNA primer, and the poly A tail precedes the 3 prom cDNA primer. The next step is to identify reads that have both the cDNA primers and the poly A tail, trim them away. Next, we cluster these reads at the isoform level, and we polish them to generate a consensus sequence for each cluster. It should be noted that the first three steps are done without the reference genome. As such, if you do not have a reference genome or you don't want to be dependent on it, you can run the ISOSeq workflow without any reference genome. But if you do have one, we will map it back at the end, and you can get the relationships between different isoforms of the same gene. There's many community tools that's been developed. I'm showing a few here that uh, processes ISOSeq downstream after the SmartLink workflow. I will highlight three projects that uses ISOSeq for genome annotation. The first is actually the first multiplexed plant ISOSeq genome annotation project that pub was published in 2016 on the B73 maize genome. This, is, this was in collaboration with Bo Wang and Doreen Ware at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratories, where we multiplexed six maize tissues and ran them on ISOSeq. What we will find is that using ISOSeq, we were able to get much longer transcripts shown here in the histogram, where the red is the PacBio ISOSeq read lengths, and the green was the V3 annotation at the time. We were also able to find much more isoform diversity per gene than the reference. In addition to that, the multiplexing of different tissues allowed us to see tissue-specific isoforms. With Sonia's talk of the BAT1K project, you've already seen such examples. Furthermore, both of these uh, figures are showing that there were incorrect annotations of genes. In the first case, the upper panel shows the red, which is the V3 annotation, incorrectly showing two separate genes, when the isoseq data below shows that this is actually one gene. In the lower panel, the CSR1 gene was missing in the V3 annotation and was actually shown in the isoseq data. In 2017, Richard Crowell from the Roslyn Institute, he's actually present here, I believe, published a paper on chicken isoseq. 
I'm showing two examples from the paper. First is if you look at the TGEA, the blue panel, the short read misassembled two genes into um, one gene. If you look at the PacBio data, which is shown in yellow, it unambiguously showed that these are two individual genes. The paper focused on an alternative way to make cDNA libraries using normalization at 5 prime cap trap. Normalization was shown to have increased di uh, discovery of low abundance long non-coding RNAs. I should mention that uh, Richard is working with Lexogen to create a, a library workflow for normalization of 5 cap trap. If you're interested, I believe Lexogen's workshop is tomorrow. I uh, encourage you to attend. And what Richard found was that using the chicken isoseq data, long non-coding RNAs, which were previously heavily under annotated for chicken, were shown to be just as diverse and abundant as human and mouse. One last short example is I've mentioned that the isoseq workflow does not rely on a reference genome. As such, recently there was a paper where there was no garlic genome. However, the customer used isoseq to create a garlic reference transcript, which they then used a deep coverage RNA-seq data to map back to the ISO-seq transcript data set and qu made, uh, did quantification to identify trait genes. A common question that's asked for ISO-seq project is how much to sequence for genome annotation. The answer is almost always it depends, but <laughs> I will give you some guidelines, at least a way to think about this problem. First is let's look at what this data looks like for the human universal reference sample on 3.0 chemistry diffusion loading 20 hour movie, which is our current recommendation for ISOSeq. We recommend loading from 50 to 70%. The polymerase read length for these two cells were 39 and 46 KB. Next, if we look at how much CCS, that is high fi reads, was generated, it's about 570,000, of which 430,000 of them were full length. What's important is for ISOSeq data, it is the number of full length reads rather than any other metric that is the best indicator for how many genes and transcripts can be detected. I'm showing you here uh, publications from many previous years. Some were done on RS2, some were done on early SQL. I'm showing you different samples, the number of full length reads and the number of genes and transcripts that were obtained for genome annotation. Taking the full length reads and based on the current estimated 3.0 chemistry yield of 400,000 full length reads per cell, I'm showing you on the last column approximately how many smart cells that would take on the current system. Finally, I want to show you something that is not currently a product but something I'm exploring. If you are interested in doing phasing on your favorite plant and animal, please feel free to come to me, uh, come to talk to me at the poster. So, it has always been known to me that the full length and the single molecule nature of isoseq enables isoform level phasing. For genome annotation purpose, which was for the longest time the main goal of isoseq projects, the SNP level variations were largely ignored or not important. However, shown here is an example of an F1 maze hybrid. Shown here in the gray area are individual single molecule alignments mapped back to the B73 reference genome where the SNPs are, are shown in the purple box. If I sort this alignment, it becomes very clear that there are two distinct alleles coming from the two parents. Recently, we collaborated with Bo Wang and Doreen Weir at Cold Spring Harbor, looking at two parent B73 KI11 maze and two F1 hybrids. We did it on three different tissues, multiplexed them into four libraries and sequenced it. I'm going to briefly talk about what isoface does. The concept is relatively simple. Using the full length reads, we can align them back to one of the reference genomes, preferably the parent genomes. We independently call SNPs at each position. Shown here in the toy example, there are three SNPs. Then we simply count the number of reads that support each haplotype. Because there might still be residual errors, though few, in the full length read data, we can do minor error corrections to get back to the number of leos that was expected. I'm going to show you a few examples here. First, this first example, I'm first showing you just the reads from the B73 reads. Of course, because this is mapping back to its own reference genome, you should not see any SNPs. If you then look at the KI11, it is clear that there are six SNPs. 
shown marked by the purple and the blue arrow. The blue arrow is actually a SNP that was found with matching short read only due to lower ISOC coverage at the five prime end. The SNPs two through six have been confirmed to be found in both short and long reads. If we then look at the two F1 hybrids, we can see that the two parents are expressed. Here I am showing a possible example of short read SNP missed calls. So here on the KI11, you could see there are seven SNPs. However, between SNP, SNP six and seven, there is a region that I've shown with the red arrow that have SNPs that are called by short read only despite good ISOC coverage and no indication of SNPs. So let's zoom in on this region. First, on the upper panel shown is the KI11 isoseq data, which does not show um, evidence for SNPs. However, if you look on the lower panel for the KI11 short read, shown with a series of red arrows are where the SNPs are called using short read only. There is some indication that this is likely a mismapped set of short reads. Finally, I want to show you some examples of Lee specific expression. So in B73 and KI11, you could see that um, the KI11 has the SNPs, and then if you look at the F1 hybrid, what's interesting is the first F1 hybrid, only the KI11, which is the maternal allele, is expressed. If we then look at the other F1 hybrid, this time the maternal allele, which is the B73, is expressed. Not shown here is the short read data that confirms this allele-specific expression. In the final example, I'm showing you a case of allele-specific isoform expression. In the red box shown is the last exon, the three prime exon, which is spliced in the KI11, but unspliced in B73. When the F1s are shown, it is found that the F1s inherit the allele-specific expression, isoform expression from the parents. So just to conclude, ISOSeq provides full-length RNA-seq for genome annotation, comparative analysis, which I actually took some slides up for, to make it shorter, but this, it's been done, transcript annotation for short requantification, and finally, full-length transcript haplotyping. And I'd be happy to stay for questions or please come see me at the poster later. Thank you.